Gemini speaks, Gemini speaks. What's happening, my people, my people, my people, my people, my people. So, here we go. Obviously, I'm brown. And maybe, obviously, I'm American. I am an African American. I am a descendant of African slaves brought to America for free labor. Anyway, so that's kind of the general description of who I would be, a nationality, overall umbrella. I am an African American. What does that mean? Well, that means I might use a certain language, way of being in the world that is influenced by where I came from. I'm not though, that thing. I am African American, but I am certainly not a typical African American. But culture is a whole other story, right? Because you can have black skin and you might have immigrated to America, but you could be Caribbean. You could be Afro-Latino. You can be other things, right? So here I am, here to tell you that culturally speaking, I white. I know. It's not something that is good or bad. I was brought up in a community of white people. Uh, I went to school with mostly white kids and I lived in a neighborhood with white kids and all my friends were white. When you start that from a young age, you are likely to fall into mannerisms and thinking of the group you're in. So the group that I was in, they were white. I am coming to accept the fact that culturally speaking, I am white. Now, this is sort of tricky because my family, culturally speaking, are very typically African-American, culturally African-American, 100%. Even my cousins who have a good education, they still fit into that mold because it's more than language. It's how you see yourself in the world and it's how you present in the world and who you are comfortable with. It's only been in the last maybe 15 years of my life that I am able to be in an African-American cultural environment and feel relatively comfortable. Most of my life, I just didn't fit in and I felt very uncomfortable and I felt very isolated and alone. I felt this even in my own home in terms of my family brother is not like me. My mom is more like me, but still she's culturally African American. She's an educated woman. She has a sophistication. So I get some of my energy from her as well. But typically I am in the world as a white woman more than I am in the world as a black. To be culturally white certainly doesn't make me white with the experience of a white woman. So I do have an experience of a black woman in terms of how other people perceive me, in terms of how other people treat me. And so with that in mind, I don't have the freedom and the attitude that a white woman would have. I have to be on guard in a way that a black woman's on guard. I don't have the freedom of whiteness, if we would call it that. Culturally white, it only means how you are shaped and seeing yourself in the world, how you sort of walk. It's just a way of walking and the way of seeing the road ahead of you. And I just don't fit in. Um, I can have a conversation with anyone, really. But I can have a conversation with black women, but it's never really, it, for me, I have to make an effort. And they know there's something different about me. They may say things like, and since I was little, they did. They say things like, oh, you're acting white. Actually, I am white. I'm not acting white. I am culturally white. So what I mean is the typical middle-class educated type of white woman you would meet, that's what I'm like. If you just heard my voice, you would not know whether I was African American or white. And in fact, most people are shocked that I'm not white when 
I do phone interviews and things like this. Especially when I was younger, my voice was way high pitched. And, um, I've, I've learned to use language that is helping me sort of mold the greater African-American community so I feel more comfortable and that they feel more comfortable. It, doesn't, it didn't come naturally, I had to work on it. This probably seems like an odd conversation. But like I said, it's not good or bad. It's just how we come to be based upon our environment. It happens all the time. I've met Asian people who grew up in black neighborhoods and they're more African-American than I am. Um, I've met white women who are more African-American than I am. If you grow up in those neighborhoods and those are your friends and you're hanging out with them, you take on their mannerisms, you take on their vibe, their way of being in the world, it just happens. It's just what happens. Not a crime. But I want to talk about it. It's plagued my life, actually, and I've always felt bad about it. My family and the community, and anytime I had to be in an all black environment, I've always felt bad about it. Um, now I just don't kind of care. It hasn't really changed. They just tolerate me. It sounds kind of sad, but true. They tolerate me. They might not even like me because in the African American community, when you come across as white, they think that you're better than them or they're making assumptions that you are coming across in a way that's saying that you're better than them. But this is natural. This is just the way that I am. I'm not putting on airs or anything. I, I, I am actually this way. I actually talk this way. I'm not faking it. So when they say that like you're acting white or she's like a white girl, that would probably be more accurate. However, there are other things that are definitely make me black, right? My skin color in America, I'm black, but culturally I'm not. And if I had grown up in Latin America, my skin is black, but I would be Afro-Latino. It's not really about the language. It's about in terms of what you understand about culture, whether it's food, little traditions, including language, of course. All of these come together to give you some sort of social identification. And that's just what it is. So, yes, my skin is black, but culturally speaking, I'm white. I know things about African-American culture, for sure. Uh, it would be like I know things about many cultures. I know things about Japanese culture and Chinese culture. But I don't know them intimately, and I don't know them in a way that comes from me. It's more like an outside information kind of thing. I have this outside information from my family being an African American. But we're not the same. I know we're not the same because when we have family events and things like that, I know I'm different. And they don't really point it out, but energetically it comes sort of an obvious maybe more obvious to me than them because I'm making an effort to fit in to not seem different. Less so today because like I said, I'm much older and it doesn't matter so much. But when I was younger, it was very painful not to belong. The other thing I will say though is that when you're black and you have white culture, you don't kind of belong there either. I mean, you can mingle, but you're like the exception to the rule. They accept you in, you're black, but you're culturally white, but you're not really one of them. It's a difficult place to be. Very, very difficult place to be. And I'll say this one other thing. There are educated black people, but they still identify with black culture. They're not the same as what I'm talking about. So yes, there are wealthy black people who are still culturally black. There's this crossover too, so that you have a certain look about you, like if you're light-skinned black and you're culturally white, it's a little easier, believe it or not. If you are culturally white and you're wealthy, it's actually a little easier because you're gonna be in a group of people that are gonna be taking that into account, right? They're gonna take into account the socioeconomic background you're coming African-American, brown-skinned, African-looking, culturally white. So I just wanted to say one other thing about being culturally white. There, of course, is a range of 
white culture as well. So I'm from New York. So I have a New York culture intermingled with this as well. So the type of white culture that might come out of like a Minnesota and Idaho versus a San Francisco or New York is going to be different. So when I say cultural whiteness, that also has different nuances uh, and different implications of what that would look like. It's complicated to try to explain. But thanks for listening. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope you got something out of it or you have a thought that comes from this thought. And that's it. Peace.